All right, so here's what I did. Um, I've been looking online. I've been seeing that people have been saying things like, oh, you need to reformat your SD card or um, something or change the sector size or the block size or whatever. So what I did was I wanted to find out what was the uh, performance of each SD card that I had. Now, keep in mind that these are the SD cards I have. If you have different cards with different ratings, you you know may not be able to use my data or information. But then again, you might. So um, let's just see what happens here. Here's the cards I used. Uh, 4 gig, an 8 gig, and a 16 gigabyte. Um, there's a um, SanDisk, a Toshiba, and a SanDisk. And um, basically all I did was I f uh, formatted them um, using different sector sizes. And then did performance benchmark tests either in Windows Mobile, in Android, and also timed the boot up process of Windows and Android separately. And here's what I came up with. So I got a big spreadsheet of multiple tabs and I got the times that it took to copy the Android files into the SD cards formatted on um, either the 4, 8 or 16 gigs at 4K, 8K, 16K, 32K or 64K sectors. Um, and uh, the bigger the sectors, the faster it copied. I kind of expected that, but um, for the important sizes, 16, 32, and 64K, oh, it was roughly the same, 13 to 14 minutes to copy the 1.7 gigabytes. Now the load times, um, the load times of Windows from the time I pushed the button to the time that I got a lock screen and a uh, a stabilized screen basically was oh anywhere from 27 to 29 seconds there was really no big difference between all the different cards because let's face it Windows Mobile isn't booting off of the SD card it's booting off of internal ROM so that wouldn't really make a big difference Android however is booting off of the SD card and not the internal ROM so I was expecting that to make a difference now I did four tests of the same thing and I got an average. The green line is the number of seconds it took with the default formatting the card came with. That's important because a lot of people get the cards, they don't reformat them to change the sector size and well you're basically just using the defaults which may not perform the best. So let's see the average for the 4, 8 or 16 gig um, 86, 88, or 93 seconds. 93 seconds for the 16 gigabyte card with the, with 8K sectors. Um, that dropped to 90 seconds, so shaved off three seconds off of the load time when I reformatted them with 1632 or 64K. The 8 gigabyte also dropped just a little bit at, uh, from 88. Uh, actually, it dropped more. Sorry, uh, with the 83, 82, then 80 at 32K. 4 gigabyte card now. I'm not really going to use a 4 gigabyte card, but I thought I'd just throw that in there because I had it. Went from 86 to 78, so it dropped about 8 seconds. So there does seem to be a difference in loading. Now that's loading from Windows Mobile um, into Android, which will use the formatting based on the Windows Mobile. Now once Android is loaded, however, you have a data file, an image file, and you're not strictly bound to the sector sizes on the SD card even though you're still using them um, you're you're actually using the uh, formatting inside the image file so um, I did two more benchmarks and that was actually using bench a benchmark program I'm not gonna go into which programs I used I used a bunch of different ones and I came up with these numbers basically what I did was I formatted the 4, 8, or 16 gigabyte cards with the different sector sizes and I transferred files of various sizes either 2K, 4K, or 8K files back and forth in reading and writing and again the green line is the um, default I would have had and I'll just grab one as an example but for the uh, or one side as an example the uh, 4 gigabyte card by default would have been Point, uh, two three megabytes per second that's kind of small and for it larger sizes or larger sector sizes didn't make too much of a difference 
Um, if you look at the 8 gigabyte card, the default of 4K with 0.02 seconds, that's really slow. And it increases dramatically from 0.02 to 0.1. Um, the 16 gigabyte card, 0.13 to 0.18. Now that's not a big deal. Um, however, when I look at the averages, let's see, I can see uh, between all the different sizes, because I did transfer 4K, 2K, and 8K files to simulate the, what you know you might do with either text files, image files, and whatnot on your SD card. I did get an increase from an average of 24 of all different sizes, or 0.24, excuse me, to 0.43. That's a dramatic uh, jump there. 0.24 megabytes per second to 0.43. Um, on the 8, 8, 8 gigabyte card. The 16 gigabyte card, uh, not too much of a big difference, 0.72 to 0.78. Um, now that's on the uh, writing times. On the reading times, I also got a slight increase. Uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0.71 was pretty good for the 8 gigabyte card. Now that's the um, benchmark of the um, SD card itself. Now let's take a look at the benchmark inside the image file. Inside the image file, 1.3 to 1.57. Now, you know, it, it doesn't seem like a big number, but uh, it actually is when you consider the number of files or the amount of data you transfer, any second you shave off is going to make a big deal. Now, I'm not going to go through all these numbers. Let's just say that I spent a lot of time, a few days, creating this chart with all the benchmark numbers to figure out what was the best uh, formatting I could use to run the Android the operating system from the SD card. Remember, it's coming off of the SD card. Now, the final test I did was an, a benchmark actually just of the SD card formatting inside Windows because, let's face it, it is running over a Windows formatted SD card. Again, the defaults right there. Now, this is in kilobytes, so the numbers are uh, look a bit larger, but in the averages, I went back to megabytes, so it's uh, easier to read there. And what I've decided to do is choose one of these formattings based on these numbers, reading and writing, for all the different tests that I did, the Windows benchmark, the benchmark in the ROM, the SD card, uh, in Android, the boot time of Android, the load time of Windows, and the amount of time it took to actually copy the files to the SD card. And I'm going to choose one setting, and I'm going to use that to test all of my future Android ROMs so that I can get the best performance out of the card and there's going to be no question about it. Now, I want you to take a look at something. The default formatting for the 16 gigabyte SD card in Windows 0.54 megabytes per second if I formatted it at 64k instead of the default 8k I got 1.29 megabytes per second that's more than twice the speed more than twice the writing speed for the reading speed uh, the default was 3.86 and 3.93 formatted at 64k so what I might do is if I test the 16 gigabyte card I might format 64k if I test the 8 gigabyte card which is uh, what I think I might do because I got I have two of them I might format it for 32k because the the uh, read speed was 3.5 even though 3.6 is higher it's not by much but at 32k for the write speed I got 0.16, which is a lot better than the 0.11 if I used the default setting. Now, um, the numbers might be a little bit hard to read. I don't know if the camera's blurry or not. I'm going through this kind of quickly. Hope everyone can follow what I'm doing. Um, just as a quick recap, I tested four size, um, excuse me, I tested three sizes of SD cards, four, eight, and 16 gigabyte, formatted them for different sector sizes. Ran benchmarks in Windows, in Android, 
timed the load speed of both Windows and Android, did read and write tests of different file sizes and number of files, and I've decided to try, in the end, 8 gigabyte cards. I'm not going to leave the formatting of 4K, I'm going to switch it to 32K. Although I've seen in some forums people have said to format it with the largest size, I found that the largest size is not the fastest. The largest size would be six, uh, 64. I'm going to use 32. Then we're going to see how well this, uh, oops. Then we're going to see how well the Android ROMs run with the default settings. I'm not going to customize them very much. Once I find one that works really, really well, I'm going to then customize it and see if I can make it my phone forever.